One thing that you notice with this slide, um, one, there are many tiles listed. And each tile is representative of a certain function. And sometimes in an organization, these tiles will be done with one or more different tool sets. So the nice thing, you're talking about simplifying client management, the nice thing with client management is all these tiles become integrated into one solution. So if you have multiple tools, you can um, start to consolidate that into one. And, of course, having one tool is going to allow your technicians to be a little bit more effective. So through the course of, of this um, demonstration, I will be illustrating or demonstrating some of these tiles. So, again, just kind of keep in mind that all this functionality included in, in the one tool set. The approach with client management is it's calling it a life cycle approach, but kind of think of that from cradle to grave. So when you bring an asset into the environment is when you can start utilizing client management to manage that device. So initially it could be the discovery, deploying the operating system, deploying software that's needed for your end users to perform their job function. Shortly after that, we're going to have to do some type of patch management, make sure they're up to date on the latest patches, checking for vulnerabilities. Um, we move into that manage quadrant. That's really kind of those ongoing day-to-day -day, um, tools like the remote control, putting in those contracts and that financial data, um, the power policy so that you um, are efficient with your, elect uh, your electric bill, if you will, and then finally the retirement of that asset. So changing that life cycle status, sending it to whatever charity or the schools or however you're disposing of your assets. It could be at the end of a lease and you need to send that back to the hardware vendor. So um, client management, taking that life cycle approach to the management of the assets in the environment. Here when we say purpose built, I've really got three S's up there, so scalability. Um, and we'll see this going forward in one of the slides. Um, I've already alluded to this a little bit. There's one agent that's allowing you to do all those tiles that we saw on the previous slide. Um, integrating with your Active Directory, of course, allows me to scale, but there are architecture pieces um, that are included in the licensing that help me scale out to my various campuses. We talk about simplicity, and you'll see this as I demonstrate the use of wizards to really get me to doing any tasks that I need to do. Um, so some people are familiar with other tools, be it SCCM, Alteris, IBM, um, and each of those tools has a way to do the client management or the managing of those devices. So what you'll see with client management, BCM, uh, BMC client management is how simple it is to use, again, with the use of those wizards and that um, interface being intuitive. Um, the third S there is security. And when we start using one tool to manage all the devices, then that means I'm having one tool to manage my desktops, that same tool potentially managing my servers. And if you have that task split up in your environment, it could be different groups. So what you're able to do inside of client management is start to delineate which groups of administrators, users are going to be able to manage which devices. So you have some, kind of think of that as the role-based access control that you can implement inside of client management. Okay, um, I alluded to this a little bit. So the topology for client management at the core is that master server. It's where, of course, I'm, I'm installing the actual software, my packages may be here, my patch management, et cetera, tunes from this master server. Now, if I want to manage devices that do not come inside of my firewall, I can place pieces into the DMZ that will allow me to still manage those devices even if they do not make a VPN connection. So that's what you'll see on the upper right-hand side of the screen. To the left, you'll see what's called a service desk server. So the BMC tools converge very nicely together, and what that means is I can be inside of a service desk ticket, and if I need to see the inventory or do a remote control session, really any of those functions that BMC client management affords me, I will be able to do that because those two products converge easily. So again, from my incident, I can do a remote control session with the device that has um, submitted a ticket. Um, in the bottom part of the screen, you'll see what's called relay agents. And so this is some of the architecture that I was alluding to before with respect to scalability. So what this allows me to do, let's say we're going to deploy um, Office. So we're moving from whatever version of Office we're on to the latest 
version that they've released. And that's a really big file. It's sourced at my master server, but I don't want all the machines coming back to the master server. So what I implement are relays um, in my various campuses. There I've got one on the West Coast. I've got one on the East Coast that's serving up those clients. So they are able to get that office locally as opposed to coming across the wire. So any of those architecture pieces that help you be more efficient, scale out your environment, are included in the topology and included with the licensing. Okay, so here we're talking about inventory management. And going forward, what I'll do is um, talk about an aspect and we'll go in and see how that's accomplished. So with my inventory management, I have two trains that I can do there. Um, the first one really is an agentless discovery. It helps me see everything that's out there in, in the environment. Once I've done that and I've decided these are the machines that I need to put an agent on, i.e., you can see here we're able to discover computers, switches, routers, so we can't put our agent on a switch, on a router, on a printer, but we can still discover them with the agent list discovery. Then I can see from there, okay, these are the machines that I want to um, target to receive my agent so I can get that in-depth inventory so I can deliver the software so I can do the patch management. So if we take a look on um, what that looks like, I'm going to head out into my demonstration environment. Um, so this is the actual console, and what you'll see on the lower right-hand side of the screen are the concept of wizards and this instant expert. Wizards really going to allow me to do any of those tile functions, if, if you will, if you can recall that from the presentation. And the one that we're talking about now is an asset discovery. So I'm just going to mouse over this. I've got a wizard that says asset discovery. And what you'll notice are there are several steps that I need to walk through to complete this discovery. So this first one, if I have it do automatic, it's just going to um, assume the credentials that I put here. And that's really the only thing that I would need to enter. You'll notice on the left, I'm putting my discovery type. The other steps are grayed out. And then I'm doing the scan. So it could be that simple. I'm going to choose for a configurable. And what you'll notice, some additional steps are going to light up here on the left. So when we say configurable, I'll go ahead and hit next. Now it's asking some additional questions. So you'll remember from the topology, I had that master server. If I had another scanner in my um, architecture, then I could choose that. But we're just going to opt for the master server. I'm going to opt for a new scan configuration. And here's where I can be very specific. I'm opting for Windows, Unix, printers, routers, switches, things that are going to spawn the SNMP, and then my virtual environment. The next question is the target. So that's how you can delineate and say a specific subnet that you want to look at. Maybe you want to look at several ranges, but that target list is where you would set that up. Here I'll just say use an existing one, and we'll say do this immediately. Um, again, I've already scanned it. I just want to show you what this wizard looks like. I'm going to go ahead and hit Next, and this is just giving it a name and sticking it in a, in a specific folder. So we'll just Next through those. Um, the part I want to show you is the protocols. So here's where, for your Windows environment, you would need to provide valid credentials so that we can look at WMI. So here, when I say add credential, again, it's just me putting in the necessary credentials, so an account that can interrogate WMI. Typically, that's some type of service account that you've created for um, BCM. Those are the credentials that you put here. If you don't put valid credentials, am I still going to be able to discover that something's there? Yes. Will I be able to determine the type? No, but you will be able to see something's there, and maybe that can alert you to put in some different credentials. So you would do the um, credentials for Unix as well. When I hit my uh, network devices, so there I'm just putting in the community strings. Again, it's valid in your network and then the credentials for my virtualization. Um, here when I go ahead and hit Next is where it's pulling up that target list. And again, I said use an existing one, so it's showing me ones that we've already sourced this tool with. But if I wanted to do a new one, then I could put in that new range. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and hit Cancel. Um, that's really the last step. And then we'll take a look to see what we were able to discover. So to do that, I can do one of two ways if we um, stick with the idea of being simplistic, then I would switch over here to the Instant Expert and then browse my inventory. As you get more familiar with client management, you would probably just head over here to the Asset Discovery and look at the discovered devices. And I've gone ahead and um, sorted this. 
And so what you can see here at the top, um, my workstation type, and I'll take this all the way to the left. So here I'm able to see workstations were discovered. You'll see here an other that's saying unknown. So this is a good example of not entering the valid credential. So I can see that um, there was an IP address out there, but I was not able to determine that type of device or the operating system on that device. Right underneath there you'll see a virtual uh, machine that was discovered. I can see the number of hosts sitting on that, um, printers, another type, remote management systems and servers. So that's what we were able to um, discover again with that agentless discovery. Now if I take the next step and go ahead and push that agent down, I'm going to hit this home screen and go back to the wizard. There is a wizard as well to do your agent rollout. So you would just simply walk through those steps, choose the devices. Um, what I'm going to do though is um, select one of the machines that already has an agent on it. I'm going to collapse this asset discovery and look at this device topology because this was one um, additional view that you're going to have available for devices that you've discovered out there that may not have the agent. So this first view I'm looking at is my client management topology. Now again, because I'm saying client management, then note these machines have the agent on them. And what you can see from this view is um, several machines connecting right back to my master server. I have another set of machines that are connecting into a relay and then that relay connecting into my master server. So I can see the topology from my client management perspective. I can also see it from a network perspective. So here I'm looking at um, the, network, the networks that are out in the environment that I've discovered. And if we look at this 192.168, I can see quickly as I expand this that I have four machines hanging off that particular network. And if we were to expand some of the others, we would see the other devices. Now again, these could potentially be agentless. The only one that required that agent was that client management topology. The third view that we have is the connectivity. And this brings into play some of those switches that we found out there. Um, so here, if I open this one up, I can see quickly I have several switches or configurations off of this 3300 switch. And then again, I'm able to see the devices connected to a given switch. So the point here is I can look at the asset discovery, find everything. I can go into the topology and start to see how they're connected. Now, I'm going to go and look at, again, like I alluded to before, if we put the agent on a device, now we have a little bit more exhaustive inventory, so let's look at one of those. So here I'm just going back to my client management view. I'm selecting one of the machines, and let's look at this inventory summary. Um, so what you'll have initially is a summary view of the inventory. Kind of think of it as a high level. So here at the top, I've got operating system, IP address, et cetera. When it comes to the hardware, I can see again from a high level computer system information. I can see I have one line item here for the BIOS. If we move into the software, I'm able to see those applications that have registered with add and remove programs. Um, as you know, everything that we install on the machine doesn't register with add and remove programs. So if I bump that and look at all, then it's going to look at all that software. At any point, if I wanted to get more in depth, what I'm going to do is open this inventory hive and look at BIOS. And you'll remember the first line really that it was giving me on that summary view was the description, but if I dig in on any of these aspects of the hardware, it gets more granular, so specifically that release date. So I can see that's an older BIOS. We may want to check and see if they've done an update or if we're having some type of issue and it required the BIOS update. I'm going to be able to scan my environment really quickly and see which machines are not at that latest um, release and then send them an update. Okay, so that's some of the things that we're going to be able to see with the inventory management.